Before we get to today's video, it is about pest control, I want to share with you that our online course for pest control called Creating a Healthy Garden is going to be opening for registration very, very soon. Keep your eye on the website at GardenNerd.com for details. Now, on with the show. Hey there, I'm Christy Wilhelmy from Garden Nerd, and this video is going to be a continuation of the last video, which was answering your questions about what's bothering you this spring. Today, our topic is grasshoppers. Yeah, grasshoppers. They are my personal nemesis because they can strip something down to a stick in no time. So let's talk about how they live, how they can die, and how to protect your crops from them. First of all, grasshoppers can live for about a year, maybe a little bit more. And they are egg-laying, they're an egg-laying species. They lay their eggs, they pupate in the soil. We're gonna come back to that. And then they hatch as nymphs, little tiny, tiny green grasshoppers. And then they grow into the big, fat, ugly, brown adults that you're used to seeing in plagues. Let's just say that. So what I wanna focus on is that nymph stage and before egg laying. This is, this is where we can most uh, interrupt the life cycle. So grasshoppers lay their eggs, the females obviously, lay their eggs in the soil and they only lay the soil in the top two inches of soil. This is important because you can disrupt that life cycle by just digging up the soil a little bit. I'm not talking about rototilling. As I always say, give your rototiller to someone you hate and let them destroy their soil. But you can take your two hands and simply scratch up the surface of the soil over winter if your ground does not freeze. Grasshoppers will lay their eggs usually in the late summer or early autumn, and then those will incubate in the soil over winter, and then they hatch in spring. So you see where I'm going with this. If you can interrupt the life cycle by scratching up the surface, disturbing the soil surface, they, those eggs will come to the soil surface where they will desiccate and die. Now, of course, that doesn't always happen, but that's your best bet of interrupting the life cycle. The second thing you can do as usual, which I always come back to, is really boost your soil food web because like everything that incubates in the soil, there is a nematode out there for it. The other thing you can do is as soon as you see them emerge and they're really tiny, that's the easiest time to squish them under your mighty shoe, as I often say, because they're not at the super gross stage yet where I have, I have a friend <laughs> who she would cut them in half with shears and that's too much for me. I can't do that, but I can squish them or jet blast them into the soil with a hose nozzle it may not always be effective, but it's like the most I could do. The other thing you can do is protection, right? So yes, they're going to come out of the soil, but if you cover your plants that you care about with bird netting, the grasshoppers are less likely to get in there. I had a lemon tree that was being decimated by grasshoppers and I covered the entire tree. And again, this is a very dwarf bush habit Meyer lemon tree that's easy to cover because it's small because I keep them small like I teach in my books and that makes it really easy to keep the grasshoppers out and my lemon tree was able to recover by keeping it covered for like about six months to eight months and then I was able to the, the grasshoppers oh that's the other thing you need to know grasshoppers run usually a a really big infestation of grasshoppers will last three years so they kind of run in a cycle where there's a lot of them for the, the first year, second year, and then they taper off in the third, or it can work in reverse. But basically you're, you're looking at a three year cycle. If you see a lot of grasshoppers, get on it right away, interrupt the life cycle as much as possible by disturbing the soil. And then that will uh, reduce the population in the years to come. So when you see little baby grasshoppers, don't think, oh, how cute. Just think like, now is the time to get out the big guns. There is another approach that is a biological control. It causes grasshoppers to get something called nosema. And it basically gives them a disease where they go belly up. It's not something I like to do because there are other animals that can be affected by nosema. And usually there's a specific nosema for the 
pest you're trying to get. But you know, we've all heard about the bat nosema uh, that is you know causing a devastation among their population. So I'm really careful when it comes to applying those kinds of biological controls in the form of disease. Uh, I'd rather stick with disturbing the soil to interrupt the life cycle and physical barriers. You'll find a lot more information about controlling pests in your garden at GardenNerd.com and in my books, Gardening for Geeks and Grow Your Own Mini Fruit Garden. Don't forget to check out my new novel, Garden Variety. It's a lot of fun and it'll get you through the spring and summer seasons. It's a nice beach read too. Also, our upcoming course on pest control, Creating a Healthy Garden, will cover so much more than you saw in this video, so check it out. It opens for registration soon. That's it for this week. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, like and subscribe, and don't forget to turn on notifications to find out when our next video comes online. Consider becoming a Patreon subscriber to support all the free stuff that we do here at Garden Nerd. And of course, happy gardening.